Hey everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Mo Mondays. In this week's episode we are going back to basics. If you've just received your new Microsoft Teams Rooms device and you want to know how to make and receive calls from it and control that experience, stay tuned. Hey everyone and welcome back to a new episode of Mo Mondays. As I mentioned in the introduction, in this week's episode, I'm going to go back to basics and I'm going to show you how you use your Teams Rooms device. That's literally from the point of joining a call and then when you're inside of a call, how you control that experience. Things have changed since I started doing Mo Mondays about 12 months ago. Uh, about 12 months ago, this month actually. Um, so I wanted to do a bit of a refresh and just show you some of the new options that are now available on um, Teams Rooms devices when you're inside of a call. So without further ado, let me move over onto my device and I'll show you how that is done. So now you're looking at my Microsoft Teams Rooms device. As always, here on the right hand side is my front of room display. And then here on the left is the touch console that sits in the middle of the table. Now, when one walks into a Teams room, um, and you walk up to the touch console that sits in the middle of the table. Um, if you've booked out a meeting already, you'll see it pop up here on the calendar. So you'll see already I have one at three o'clock till 5.30, which is called Mo Mondays uh, with a join button. And we'll talk about that one in a second. But there are a number of different ways where you can actually join a meeting. Um, one of the most easiest ways to do it is if you haven't booked out a room and you've just walked into a free Microsoft Teams room, then it's easy for you to just go ahead and hit this meet now button. As soon as you hit that meet now button, it will dial you into a meeting. There's no one in the call. And then you can use the address bar at the top to add additional people into it. And I'll show you how that works in a second. Um, next, we have what we call join with ID. So when you hit that join with ID button, again, if you've just walked into a room um, and you've got your laptop and you've got your Teams meeting, but you haven't booked out a room on your Teams meeting on the invite, you will see that there's a meeting ID and also a passcode. You simply would go ahead, enter your meeting ID, enter your passcode, and then hit that join meeting. There is an option for meeting provider, by the way. So if you're using the likes of direct guest join, you have the ability to say, hey, this is a Zoom meeting or this is a Teams meeting. OK, um, let's go back to Meet Now. So if I was to Meet Now, it's again as easy as me just hitting that Meet Now button. It will dial me into a meeting. So it's an empty room. You see empty here and just hit that mute button. Um, and then you can, of, of course, see my face coming up just across here. Um, but what you would do is you would then use the invite someone and just type in somebody's name. It would then obviously pop up and you dial them into the meeting. Depending on your kind of um, network configurations or your, your, your tenant configurations, you may be ab able to add external attendees by entering their full SIP address across there as well. Um, and there is a fourth way to join into a Teams meeting. And it was actually on last week's episode or the last episode of Mo Mondays where you can walk in with a laptop into a room uh, and then it will detect the Microsoft Teams rooms nearby and you simply just go join with this Teams room and it will dial you in that way. So I'm going to show you the most easiest way, which is what, um, one of the main reasons why people choose to go native Teams rooms as opposed to BYOD. Um, and that's simply by using what we call one touch join. So as long as you've invited the room into a meeting, uh, you'll see you walk into the room, you'll see it pop up here, you'll see the join button. And it's easy as you just going in and pressing that join button across there. As soon as you hit that join button, it will just automatically dial you directly into that meeting. Now, on the right hand side, again, of course, you can see um, my uh, Microsoft Teams Rooms device and the cameras and all the mess that's in my office. Uh, and then here on the right hand side, so going back onto the screen across here, um, you'll see obviously what we see on the touch console as well. So already in the meeting, I have my Teams Rooms and Android uh, and I have this Teams Rooms and Windows. So there are actually three people inside here. It does tell you who the organizer is as well. So at, at first glance, you can see who's organized the meeting. Now, there's a number of different options that you can do across here. And let me show you how to do that. Um, very conveniently, Microsoft do add the meeting ID just here on the left hand side. So that's that, j just in case you know someone's struggling, struggling to actually join into that meeting. It's very easy for you to then call them up and say, hey, this is the meeting ID, and then they enter the ID, and then they can join into that meeting as well. Um, the other things that we can do as well um, is uh, invite people by using this top bar across here. So just like I showed you with the Meet Now option, you simply would just type in somebody's address, or if they're in on, on that tenant, you just type in their name, and it'll bring them up via the global address book, and then you just invite them, and then they can choose to obviously accept as well. 
Um, so standard controls. Standard controls all run across that utility bar that we see across the bottom. So j just down here, you can see we have a few options. Uh, we obviously have the end call button. So if I was to hit that, it would just end the call and take me out of the meeting. Um, we then have a share button. So if you hit that share button, you get the ability to uh, either use a content camera. And again, I did it on an earlier episode of Mo Mondays about how to use a content camera inside of a meeting room space. If you have a content camera set up, you simply would hit that button and then it would use, you know, like a like a whiteboard. Um if you want to share content from your laptop, the old school way, the easiest way is simply plug in a HDMI cable and then select this option here on the right hand side. Um, and that will allow you to just share that content directly into that meeting as well. <clears throat> uh, we have the mute button. Um, so you can mute and unmute, but you can also mute and unmute un individual people by using the um, in this meeting um, uh, section as well. Uh, and then of course you have the ability to turn your video on or off inside of the room. Um, very simple. You can also mute by hitting that speaker button that you see on the volume bar. Um, so there's a number of different ways to hit the mute button. And then of course you can control your, 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 your volume simply by using the up down buttons across there as well. Um, the other most common things that you'll see is reactions. People love reactions. So if I wanted to kind of send a reaction into a meeting, it's very easy for me to be able to kind of do that um, simply by tapping that button and then selecting which um, 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 kind, of, kind of emoji that I want to send. And then of course, if I want to raise my hand, I can simply go ahead and raise my hand. If I raise my hand, you'll notice that I actually I now jump up to the top, you'll see that Mo. Uh, Mo's Windows device in the office is is the person that raised the hand and you'll notice there's a little number one. Number one means I'm the first person to raise my hand. So if there's a bunch of people that have raised their hands, it will actually put them in the order that they raise their, uh, their hands in as well. Um, moving over here to the left, of course, we have the timer to show how long this meeting has been running for. Uh, a little shield, if you touch that shield, it will tell you whether it's um, the, the, the meeting is actually encrypted or not. We can see it is across here. And then, of course, we have the change your view option. So if I was to go ahead and hit change your view, I uh, have the ability to go ahead and add chat, add chat, and you'll notice now on, on the right hand side, I've now got chat functionality that's now popped up. Uh, and then also if I wanted to select front row, I can easily go ahead and select that front row layout and then front row then starts across on um, my Teams Rooms device as well. Um, now you'll notice, of course, <clears throat> the large gallery and together mode are grayed out. And that's only because there's only like one other person that's uh, joined inside of this meeting. You need to have like four or five people in the meeting before those options then come up, because then it makes sense to do. Um, if you've only got a short amount of people, Teams Rooms automatically knows gallery is going to be, be the best view or front row is going to be the best view as well. Now, if you want to move a bit more deeper in terms of what you can do with settings, <clears throat> you hit the ellipsis, which is the three buttons across here. Simply go ahead, touch that, uh, and then you have the ability to kind of look at <clears throat> meeting info. Um, so all the information about the meeting, the passcode, the meeting ID, to dial in manually, what the numbers are, etc., and, and when it was set up. Um, you can turn on live captions. So if you're inside of a room um, where maybe you want to have live captions for the audience, just simply go ahead and turn that on. I'm not going to do it right now. My mics are switched off to stop any uh, kind of issues popping up. Hence the reason why um, um, I'm not going to turn it on. Enhanced content is really more to do with content camera. I spoke about that in the last episode of Moment Days, the episode around content cameras, which enables your camera to be able to digitize ink on, uh, on like a, a whiteboard as well. Um, I'm going to ignore room control buttons just for a second, <clears throat> but I'm going to show you the other bits that we've got across here at the bottom. You've got don't show chat bubbles. And what chat bubbles does is if somebody was to send a, um, a um, chat inside of a meeting. So in fact, let me, let me just try and do it from here and give you an example. So if I was to use chat and then I was to actually send a test chat. So let's go test chat and then hit the enter button. What you'll see is it pops up like a little bubble. Um, that pops up. In fact, it's not going to do it because I actually turned chat on. So let me get rid of chat. So now chat's vanished. I'll do that one more time. And then I'm going to second try and hit that button across there. You'll notice actually we now get a bubble that pops up uh, on the window. Um, so if I don't want to see a bubble, I just go don't show chat bubbles. Uh, but actually inside of the um, uh, content view or the customized customize view options, I just turn and show chat. That pops up on the side uh, and it becomes a little easier. You can set these things by default, by the way, um, uh, or you can do it while you're inside of a meeting. Um,
Okay, so that is the chat options that we have I across here. Now, next thing I am going to show you, I've just lost my windows. Let me bring them back again. There we go. Um, if I hit the three dots one more time, there's a few other options. I can turn off incoming video. So if I didn't want to see anyone's video, sometimes this is really good if you're having bandwidth issues. Um, so if you're having bandwidth issues or maybe the screen is being weird or, you know, you just don't want that interruption, uh, you can actually go ahead and just turn on or off the incoming video. So that's a, a good thing to do. So I'm going to turn that back on and you'll see me pop up here on the side. In fact, just to stop the confusion, let me leave that switched off. So it's a bit easier. Um, we've got turn off room remote. If you watched the last episode of Moment Days, I spoke about room remote where other users are able to actually control your camera and mute and vo volume. Um, you have the ability to actually just turn that feature on or off so no one's able to actually uh, kind of control your experience across there. Um, <clears throat> audio settings. So if you want to turn on noise suppression, you simply just go and turn that on or turn it off. Of course, Microsoft is doing some new things. So there's voice isolation and things like that coming along. Who knows? It may pop up in there. If it does, I will definitely do another video and you'll you'll see that in there. And then, of course, you've got to report a problem button as well. So report a problem is pretty good because if you are running into any issues, you can actually say what sort of issue it is. You can include screenshots, et cetera, et cetera, uh, and then send that feedback that will head back into kind of the engineers and and, and, and the admi administrators on the account. Uh, so they're able to dive in um, with a bit more detail to figure out what's uh, gone on wrong there. Now, the one option I didn't show you was room controls. Now, room controls only really kicks in if you are using select cameras from select OEMs. Uh, to be honest, most cameras now do this. Um, it'd be very rare for you to get a camera that doesn't have room controls. Um, but in my case, I'm using a Poly E70 camera. Uh, and because it's Windows, I had to download um, the camera control software onto my Teams rooms on Windows uh, under the administrator account. Uh, as soon as I'd done that, the room controls option then popped up. Uh, it's probably the same thing with other OEMs. So I know with Logitech, you download some software for them, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, so it's, it, it's usually what you would do on the Windows platform. On Android, you don't have to worry about downloading anything additional on Android. It just works. You just press room controls and it'll give you all the options there. But on Windows, usually you download a third third party piece of software, um, either from Logitech, from Poly, from Crest, whoever it may be, uh, and do that. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and select room controls. When I hit room controls, you'll see the poly page now pops up um, because it's now giving me the option to control that E70 camera that I've got up there. And I have the ability to go ahead and say, hey, if I want speaker view, if I want group options, if I want people um, um, uh, uh, framing going on there. And I do have the ability to select like different cameras as well if, if you do have other cameras uh, plugged in. Um, Usually while you're in a call, you're not going to see previews because your call is actually using the call. Um, but then you can turn the tracking on and off. So if I didn't want any tracking and I want to actually go manual, uh, I can go manual. So manual PTZ then tr uh, kicks in or I can let the uh, uh, the AI capability within the camera do it all for me. I usually like having speaker switched on. So then it just zooms straight into me when I start talking. As soon as you hit that back button, it will take you back to your uh, MTR screen. Um, and when you want to end it, guess what? You just simply hit that end call button across there and it will take you back out onto your normal screen. In some cases, it will ask you for call quality. It's always a good idea to kind of touch what it is because it does ping back to Teams Admin Center to let people know or to let the administrators know whether that call was great or whether it was poor. Um, so there you have it, guys. Nice and easy. Um, that's a quick guide into how you would control a room. Things have changed, like I said, um, since last year in terms of what you can do. It just gets better and better and better. Um, so yeah, any questions, please do make sure to comment down below. Uh, and my apologies if there's any glitches and stuff going on with the video. We've decided to try and use Microsoft ClipChat and to actually record more Mondays moving forward. It's a, a bit of a change. Um, there's a bit of AI in there. It's better resolution. So hopefully it looks a lot better than what I have been using previously in the past. Um, but if you've got any comments or any questions or any queries, please do comment down below. As always, make sure to like, subscribe and comment down below and I shall see you guys next week. Ciao.